A Republican senator said he was suspicious of the push to vaccinate people against COVID-19. The House GOP leader is stonewalling a commission to investigate the January 6th insurrection at the Capitol. And conservatives have come up with an insane new lie about Joe Biden. He wants to ban meat. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. Perhaps the central theme of our politics at the moment is that one of our two major political coalitions is growing more extreme, more authoritarian, more paranoid, and more detached from reality by the day. Republicans seem to think Joe Biden's army of Antifa super soldiers is going to come to your house and take your Dr. Seuss books and your hamburgers, and I'm only slightly exaggerating. Say goodbye to your burgers if you want to sign up for the Biden climate agenda. Researchers say you'd have to cut about 90% of red meat from your diet. For Americans, that means a limit of four pounds of red meat per year. Americans would have to cut red meat consumption by a whopping 90%. That means only one burger a month. Part of his climate or green targets are to cut our red meat. He wants to cut out 90% uh, of the red meat that you all eat. That's four pounds a year. Listen, four, <laughs> four pounds a year, that's my weekly consumption of red meat at <laughs> minimum. No burgers on July 4th. No steaks on the Barbie. I'm sure middle America is just going to love that. Can you grill those Brussels sprouts? So get ready. You can throw back a plant-based beer with your grilled Brussels sprouts and wave your American flag. That's right. In Biden's America, you'll have to celebrate July 4th by drinking a plant-based beer as opposed to, you know, all those meat-based beers. Does he think PBR stands for pork and beef ribs? Does he... Think hams is made with real ham? I mean, where the hell am I supposed to put my corona now? A lime wedge? What's that? It's always been a lime wedge. Well, in my America, we drink our corona with a pig in a blanket jammed in the neck. So Larry Kudlow is a dumb person, but hey, at least he's harmless, right? I mean, what job did he have in the Trump administration? Director of the National Economic Council? That's not good. Also, it will not surprise you to learn this dumb right-wing conspiracy theory was made up entirely out of thin air after the Daily Mail wrote an article about a University of Michigan study that had nothing to do with Biden's plan or the Green New Deal. Nowhere in Biden's plan does it say anything about reducing red meat consumption, and Biden has never uttered such a thing. And yet, on cue, Republicans have run wild with this dumb and completely baseless lie. For example, there was Colorado Congresswoman Lauren Boebert, whose last name, incidentally, sounds like a Dilbert character who wears a don't tread on me t-shirt. <laughs> that, was, that was way better than I thought it would be. <laughs> I mean, one more time, let me tell you one. Oh yeah, that's good. Bober tweeted, Joe Biden's climate plan includes cutting 90% of red meat from our diets by 2030. They want to limit us to about four pounds a year. Why doesn't Joe stay out of my kitchen? And Donald Trump Jr. tweeted, I'm pretty sure I ate four pounds of red meat yesterday. That's going to be a hard no from me. Four pounds. It's going to be a hard something from you. Try to get some fiber in there, DJ. Jesus. No wonder this weirdo always has the sweaty, bloated vibe of Joey Chestnut at the end of a hot dog eating contest. Also, back to Bobert's comments, don't think you're the first person who told Joe Biden to stay out of their kitchen. Definitely strikes me as the kind of grandpa who's always sneaking in and sticking his finger in the cake batter before it goes in the oven. Joe, I told you to stay out of my kitchen. My hands are clean. That's only one hand, Joe. I'm going to show you the other one. But you need to know there's chocolate on it from earlier today. Anyway, the point is, this is what they're focused on. Dumb lies with no basis in reality. Over the weekend, former House Speaker Newt Gingrich claimed Biden was attacking Americans with so-called traditional values by repealing a policy imposed by former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo that banned diplomats from flying gay pride flags outside U.S. embassies. If you listed every idiotic thing that the Biden administration has done in the first 100 days, uh, you begin to realize whether it's threatening everybody who believes in the Second Amendment or it's attacking everybody who believes in right to life or it is attacking people of traditional values who are appalled that this administration would fly the gay flag at American embassies all over the world. Uh, I mean, you just go down item by item and it's almost like they have a checklist of what can we do that will really truly infuriate uh, traditional Americans yeah, totally. The same so-called traditional Americans who supported the thrice-married adulterer who had an affair with a porn star and thought the Bible was about two dudes named Corinthian. Also, knew maybe the dude 
who had multiple affairs, including one that led to his resignation as Speaker of the House, should hold his tongue when it comes to so-called traditional values. And why are the gross, adulterous creeps always the ones lamenting the decline of traditional values anyway? Is it because when they say traditional, what they actually mean are the days when you go to your office, call all the women sweetheart, drink a half gallon of gin with your two hour lunch, then leave at four and your wife would have dinner ready for you. You put on your sweater and sit by the fire reading the newspaper while the kids whose birthdays you don't know did the chores. And then you'd head back out to get spanked on the ass with the Forbes magazine in a hotel by a porn star. Remember that story? Talk about red meat. <laughs> Yowza! Also, I. Wish the Biden administration had a checklist like that. If you're some ass who's genuinely mad that an American embassy somewhere is flying a gay pride flag, then you deserve to be infuriated. Honey, bad news, we gotta cancel the trip to Iceland. They're flying the gay pride flag at the embassy in Reykjavik, and they won't let me take my gun on the glacier tour, which is all well and good, until we encounter a threatening gnome. Give me your wallet and all your fermented whale meat. Yeah, that's right, I'm from Ireland. <laughs> A lot of us are. I'm here on a visa. <laughs> These people are so deeply detached from reality, they think the biggest problems facing America right now, amid a once in a century pandemic, economic crash, rising poverty, and child hunger, are embassies flying gay pride flags and totally fictional meat bans. What's next? Is Antifa gonna force you to take the COVID vaccine so Bill Gates could inject you with a chip that tracks how many hamburgers you eat? Again. I'm only barely exaggerating because last week, Wisconsin Senator Ron Johnson went on an insane and dangerous rant where he suggested there was some sort of vague conspiracy going on with all the emphasis on vaccines. The science tells us that vaccines are 95% effective. So if you have a vaccine, quite honestly, what do you care if your neighbor has one or not? I mean, what, what is it to you? you you've got a vaccine and it's, you know, science is tell, telling you it's very, very effective. So why is this big push to make sure everybody gets a vaccine and, and it, to the point where you better impose it, you're going to shame people, you're going to, you're going to force them to carry a card to prove that they've been vaccinated so they can participate in society. Um, I, I'm, I'm getting highly suspicious of what's happening here. Those are pretty suspicious things you made up inside your weird head. But yeah, if you have your COVID shot, why do you care if your neighbor gets it? And another thing, if you have your rabies shot, why do you care if I fill your bathtub with daytime raccoons? But despite furious pushback from sane people, Ron John doubled down in a statement saying, I believe government's role and therefore my role is to help ensure transparency so that people have as much information as possible to make an informed decision for themselves. But that's not what you're doing. Instead, you're one of these cynical, just asking questions guys, the guys who merely insinuate deranged lies in order to feed rabid conspiracy theories to your paranoid base and score political points, but do it in the most cowardly way by quote unquote just asking questions. It's called the Tucker Carlson maneuver. Soon you'll start squinting like you're trying to solve the jumble on the back of a cereal box and laughing uncontrollably at inappropriate moments like you just got released from Arkham Asylum. I'm kind of more worried about the rest of the country which thanks to police inaction, in case you haven't noticed, is like boarded up. <laughs> so that's more my concern. Well, in other words, you're being replaced and there's nothing you can do about it. So shut up. <laughs> I'm not gonna even make fun of that laugh because I'm worried if I do, the next time I hear it will be through a muffled pillow being pressed down on my face. Anyway, the point is if you were genuinely trying to inform people, you'd tell them about the detailed safety and efficacy data from both the trials and the real world studies, which show that the vaccines work incredibly well and are incredibly safe. We also keep getting new data telling us that the new vaccines cut down on transmission too. So yes, your neighbors should get it, both for their own health and so they don't spread it to someone else. Also, young and healthy people are getting sicker and going to hospitals in higher numbers, especially in states with high case numbers like Michigan. And lastly, we want as many people as possible to get vaccinated so the virus isn't constantly circulating at high levels and we can get back to some semblance of normal without having to worry about cases, hospitalizations, and deaths going back up. I shouldn't have to explain all this to you. I'm just a late night talk show host. What little science I know, I have cobbled together from Jurassic Park movies, Snapple caps, and previous closer looks. You know how little attention I paid in science class? I thought the periodic table was something you bought at Pottery Barn. <laughs> yes, thank you, Fred. Finally, a perfectly timed rim shot. <laughs> yep, but we just, we just only need the one, buddy. <laughs> Fred, seriously, just no more rim shots. I mean, what am I, a proctologist? Okay, well that, we definitely need one there. Just. 
Anyway, Ron Johnson is the same guy who suggested it was actually fake Trump supporters who stormed the Capitol on January 6th, a lie that has ricocheted around right-wing media. In fact, on Sunday, House GOP leader Kevin McCarthy said he wants any commission investigating the insurrection to also look at Antifa and Black Lives Matter. For the last year, we've had political violence across this country and in this city. I think we should look at all of that. Why not confine this committee? It's a big deal. What happened on January 6th when the, you had this insurrection at the Capitol? You had an insurrection at the Capitol. You, you've had political violence for the last year in this building. You had a Good Friday, an officer killed for a political belief right on that Capitol as well. If you're now going to put a commission together, why wouldn't you look at all the problems? So you want no, you want a commission to look at all the problems? And while we're at it, can we have the commission investigate this? I want you to watch Nancy Pelosi hand me that gavel. And I promise you this, I won't bang her with it, but I'll bang the end to the socialism and yes to America. That is one of the weirdest sentences I've ever heard, and I work near Times Square. Do you know how often I've had German tourists come up to me and ask, can you tell where's the headquarters of the Little Chocolate Candy Man? So you mean the M&M store? Yeah, we want to meet the sexy one. I wouldn't mind either, I'm from Iceland. Do you mind giving me a, a wee bit of directions? <laughs> you can't just take a commission about an insurrection, a very specific and horrifying event in the history of this country, and make it about whatever you want just to score dumb political points with your base. When Republicans spent a year investigating Benghazi, Democrats weren't like, hey, uh, while we're at it, could we also investigate what Harrison Ford's been smoking? Whatever that strain is, let's legalize that now. It was like my man went to Union Station to catch a train and only then found out they were hosting the Oscars. Hey, since you're here, you want to give one out for editing? Sure, I do carry around these Blade Runner editing notes. And there's a lot more we need to find out about what exactly happened on that day, which is why we need a commission singularly focused on the insurrection. For example, one of the few Republican members of Congress who voted to impeach Trump has said that McCarthy told her about a conversation he had with Trump in the middle of the riot in which Trump seemed to justify the insurrection. This is actually part of the impeachment record, the second impeachment. This was read into the record there. According to Jamie Herrera Butler, after McCarthy told Trump it was his supporters storming the Capitol, Trump responded, quote, well, Kevin, I guess these people are more upset about the election than you are. I mean, I suppose that's true, but it's a little like saying, well, I guess these zombies enjoy eating brains more than you do. So clearly Trump supported the attack as if we needed any more evidence. He would have been perfectly happy if the mob had successfully taken over the Capitol, stopped the counting of electoral votes, and allowed him to overturn the results. Saying Trump didn't know anything about it is like saying Glenn Close doesn't know how to do debut. Second Oscars joke. Look, we follow the buzz, okay? That's what people are talking about, so that's what we write jokes about. No more MASH references, no more jokes about Vince Vaughn, Owen Wilson buddy comedies from 20 years ago. From now on, it is all fresh, topical pop culture references here at Late Night. Anyway, McCarthy was asked if that account of his conversation with Trump was accurate, and McCarthy refused to say. Is that what President Trump said to you? When I talked to President Trump about, I was the first person to contact him when the riots was going on, he didn't see it. What he ended the call was saying, telling me, he'll put something out to make sure to stop this. And that's what he did, he put a video out later. Quite a lot later. And it was a pretty weak video, but I'm asking you specifically, did he say to you, no, I guess not, some people are more concerned about the election than you are? No, listen, my conversations with the president are my conversations with the president. Wow, he avoided that question like he was Vince Vaughn and Dodgeball. Buddy, 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 you're killing me here. I would never divulge a private conversation. I'm a discreet guy. You know that about me. Do I gossip occasionally? Sure. Would I let a secret slip here and there in return for a favor? Who wouldn't? But I tell you, I would never tell someone else what you told me in confidence. Not now, not ever. All right, wow, man. Right on. Owen Wilson wasn't in dodgeball, but I mean, he should have been, right? So I lied when I said our references from now on will be fresh. Much like Kevin McCarthy lied in that answer. Segue, <laughs> because first of all, there's no way Trump didn't know what was going on until McCarthy called him. We have contemporaneous accounts telling us Trump was watching it all unfold on TV and gleefully egging it on. And even if we didn't have those accounts, we'd still know that Trump was aware of the insurrection as it was happening because he's always watching TV. Honestly, I'm not sure why it never occurred to us, but we could have avoided his presidency by just planting him in front of the wall of TVs at Circuit City for four years. Circuit City folks, they love us there. Wanted in a landslide. Sadly, it wasn't enough to overcome all the fraudulent votes from the whiz. That's why nobody beats them, folks. It's all a fraud, but what a slogan. 
What a slogan. We used to have the best slogans, didn't we, folks? What happened to all our beautiful slogans? Got to go to Moe's. Moe's Staff, Deaf Comedy Jam. Jam! We love jam, don't we, folks? Smuckers. <laughs> Sounds dirty, not. Not dirty, it's delicious. With a name like Smuckers, it's got to be good. That's what they say, it's true. But you can't buy it anymore, that's what I hear. They canceled Smuckers. I haven't been to a store in years. I don't know if that's true, but I... Also, Trump didn't... He didn't put a video out to stop anything. He told the rioters, we love you, you're very special. And one of those weird outdoor videos of his on the White House lawn where he looks like he's filming a YouTube tutorial on how to properly trim your hedges. This is one of the central themes of our politics at the moment. The Republican Party is an increasingly paranoid authoritarian movement defending a president who incited an insurrection and spreading unhinged lies about everything from life-saving vaccines to imaginary bans on red meat. I mean, it's almost like all these guys are drunk on plant-based beer. There's been a closer look. God's Love We Deliver cooks and brings over 2 million meals a year to men, women, and children living with HIV, AIDS, cancer, and other serious illnesses, and they need your help now more than ever. If you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button. Stay safe, wear a mask, get vaccinated. We love you.